Hey, what's up, fellas? How you doing? Man, it's here. Hey, what's going on guys? How we doing? Matt Antonelli here. Today we're looking at Javi Baez and his fielding mechanics. We're going to break down, if basically if I'm looking at an infielder, right? Let's say we have an Antonelli baseball player or just an infielder that comes in for a clinic or a lesson. I'm going to break down the mechanics that that infielder uses, right? And there's a lot of different things to look at. And so we're going to do the same thing today with Baez, looking at his mechanics, looking out at how he fields a ground ball. Why do we pick Javi Baez? Well, I think he's a really good infielder. Um, he's also a really popular player. A lot of people know who he is. And so um, I didn't pick him specifically because he does all these things. We're just going to look at him and break it down. Before we go into it, really important point is that sometimes people think that, you know, they talk a lot about hitting mechanics and pitching mechanics, but fielding mechanics sometimes get overlooked. And a lot of people say, well, just, you know, go field the ball. There's a certain way, if you watch all the best infielders, all the infielders that play at a high level, they do things very, very similarly. Now, stylistically, they're going to do some things different. But when you look at the actual mechanics, they're very similar. So keep that in mind. If you want to be a better infielder, yes, fielding a lot of ground balls and getting reps is important, but you need to do it smartly. You have to take the reps using the proper mechanics so that when the game happens, you approach the ball the right way. You use the proper footwork. You use the proper glove presentation. There's, there's so many things that go into it. So let's just, I'll stop talking and start talking about the fielding mechanics. So first thing is how you get ready to field, okay? So what Baez does, let's go back here, right? He's going to go right. Now he's going to step in with his left foot, and he's going to split his feet and hop, okay? Really important. I talk about this in a lot of our videos. Notice how his feet are being split and hopping, very similar to a tennis player. He's reading the ball right here. The ball is being struck right here, and he's reading it. And then the second he comes down, he's moving. Okay, so he's reading, moving. All right? Feet have to be square so that you can go in every direction the same way, like you're defending someone in basketball. The left foot can't be in front of the right. The right foot can't be in front of the left. They're square. And that's why splitting your feet and hopping is the best way to do it because you'll come down in this athletic position. If you just walk into it, sometimes you'll walk in with your left foot in front of your right or your right foot in front of your left. All right, notice the upper body. We call it a thumbs-up position. His hands, are, his hands are thumbs up. He's not down in a fielding position because, especially as a middle infielder, you're going to have to move to get a ground ball. You're going to have to run left or right or in or back. And so if you're in a fielding position, you've got to get up out of that fielding position to move. So I'm athletic. My back is slightly bent forward, so I'm in good posture. My thumbs are up. I'm in a running position with my hands, so I can just run from there. Okay, if you're a corner infielder, you're going to be a little bit lower. And if you're a middle infielder, you're going to be a little bit higher. Okay, again, he's playing middle infield here. All right, so now we're ready to move. First step, you can see him starting to approach this ball. And I know we can't see the ball, but you can tell by his step that he's working to get to the right of the ball. So I always want to get to the right of the ball because I'm always going to be throwing the ball left on 99% of my ground balls. If I'm throwing the first, then I'm a third baseman, shortstop, or second baseman, I'm throwing to my left, okay? And so I want to get to the right of the ball so that I can then create an angle to get my momentum and get my direction going towards my target. Now, as he approaches the ball and starts to lower into it, your footwork is going to be right left field. But actually before then, watch how he goes big steps, right? So here we go. Big step left, big step right. And now as he gets close, he starts to break his footwork down. So he goes big to small. You gain rhythm. You gain control of your body. And now as you start to lower yourself, you're going to go right left field. It's always right left field. Seems simple. I see lots of young infielders. What the two things I see happen, one, they'll hop into the ball. So they'll get close and then they'll go right and left foot together and hop. And when they feel that they become their feet become stagnant. They don't continue to move throughout the ball. All their momentum is killed. The other thing I'll see is they'll go left right field. If you go left right field, then you have to go left right left to throw. If you go right left field, you can go right left throw. It's much quicker. But notice, when you go right, 
left field. See how his momentum continues to move towards his target? If you go left right field, your momentum is moving this way. Then you have to stop and go that way. So it's right, left, field. The timing should be you should catch the ball as your left foot is landing. You can see right here he's almost perfect timing. It's a split second before, right? But again, we're in very slow motion. So that's what I'm trying to time out. Left foot to the catch. Right? And that allows me to see how his momentum is moving through the ball and towards his target. All right. Let's talk about glove presentation. I want to get down basically into a triangle. I have my foot, my right foot, my left foot, and my glove. It forms a triangle. I want to expose the glove to the ball. Right? And so I always say, if I have eyes in my glove, show the eyes to the ball. Seems simple again. A lot of players show the glove late or they don't show it properly. Right? There it is. I want my back flat. I tell our players two things. I say, you're an ironing board and I want to be able to iron my shirt off your back. Some kids don't know what an ironing board is and don't know how to iron. Then I say, okay, you're a dinner table and I want to put a plate and have some dinner right off of your back. I need it to be flat. When your back is flat, your hands will get out front. I need my hands out front so that I can see the ball and the glove at all times. If I'm if my back is straight up and down, my hands will come underneath me. I can see the ball, I can't see my glove. I need to see both of them. Notice how he can see ball and he can see glove, right? So I need a back that is flat. Knees are bent, right? So I'm bending at the knees, but then I'm also bending at the waist to get my back flat. It's both. I can't have no bend in my knees because I'll be too high. And I already said I can't have no bend at the waist because then my hands will be too far underneath. I want my eyes in the action as close to the ball as I can get them. Okay? It's really, really key. My bare hand is going to be slightly off center. So it's not 12 and 6. This hand is going to be at like the 1 o'clock-ish position, and this hand is going to be at like the 7 o'clock-ish position, okay? So it's not 12-6. It's slightly off-center, okay? My fingers are up. When the ball comes in, I don't catch the ball and close my glove. I'm deflecting the ball. Notice how that's a deflection. The ball goes in. The ball goes above the fingers. It's not going into the web and being caught. It's going above above the fingers this way and now my bare hand traps the ball right the glove never closes notice how that glove doesn't close this is very key if it's a two-handed play I never close the glove a two-handed play is going to happen when the ball is fielded within the framework of my body if it's outside the framework then I will go one hand if it's inside the framework two hands deflect that hand comes down, traps the ball. Now, I bring the ball to the middle of my body. I call it funneling. My elbows are going to go out. My thumbs are going to come up. I have soft hands. I bring the ball here. right? I bring the ball to the middle as I go right to left and left to target. That's my footwork. Funnel, right to left, left to target. There's two types of footwork. There's two steps and four steps. This would be a two step. Right to left is one foot. Left to my target is two. Ready? One, two. Right, left. This is when I need to get rid of the ball quickly. If it's not a fast runner or the ball is hit so hard that I have time, well, then I go right to left, left to my target, and then I would just do it again. He doesn't do that here because he has to get rid of the ball quickly. Must be a fast runner. All right? You learn that by getting a lot of ground balls, playing the game. When you're in practice, have a runner go down the line or use a stopwatch. That improves your internal clock. All right, I bring the ball to the middle of my body. Let me back up one second. One thing I forgot to mention. I want to try to feel the ball over my left eye. I always want to feel the ball slightly to the left of center, so we call it left eye. I do that because... If I my, my glove is on my left hand, which is attached to my left arm. And so the most natural spot for me to put my glove down and open it to the ball is on the left side of my body because it's on my left arm, like I just said. 
if I put it down to the right, my arm starts to get extended this way. It starts to get stiff. I get hard hands. I don't want that. Also, if I bring the glove this way, well, now I have to kind of manipulate my hand to open the glove to the ball. And now my hands get hard and get stiff. So in front of my left eye is where I want to field it. Also, we're moving to our left, like we said earlier. If the ball comes up and takes a bad hop and hits me in the chest, if I try to field it over my left eye, it's going to come up. It's going to hit me slightly to the left of my chest, and the ball is going to bounce slightly to my left right where I'm moving. If I try to field it over here, the ball is going to come up, hit me in the right chest. The ball is going to go to the right. I'm going to the left. I can't replay it. So I have one shot to field it that way. If I keep it to my left, I can replay the ball sometimes. It won't always happen, but it gives me a chance. Okay. Now I bring the ball up. I go right to left, left to my target. Right. So it's funnel right to left. Now I'm breaking my hands once I get to the middle of my body. I take the ball out. My fingers stay on top of the ball. My arm action is short. We tell our fielders, if you're in water up to your waist, I don't want the ball to get wet. Notice how the short arm action, boom. Right? This shape here is like a V. You want to keep that tight. You don't want the ball to get way out here as an infielder. Now I'm ready to throw. My shoulder's locked on. My front side's locked on. Typically for an infielder, the glove is going to be low. As an outfielder, the glove will be higher. But I'm usually going to have the glove slightly down. Again, doesn't have to be this low, but you'll notice with infielders, your glove is going to be slightly down, not up. Okay? I throw. It's a slight follow. You don't, some people exaggerate this. We say throw and follow. Right? Again, a slight follow through. You don't have to run towards your target. We're not trying to throw and run at the same time. All right? But what we don't want is you to throw and not get through your throw and be on your backside. Okay? This takes a little bit of stress off your arm. If you do a good job of your footwork, getting momentum, this should be kind of natural. You shouldn't have to force it too much. All right? Let's watch it again. And I'll play it one more time for you. Pretty good. Now, we could talk about probably more stuff. But right there are the main things I'm looking for when I watch an infielder play. If you think that's hocus pocus and not real, just go watch all the infielders. And make a checklist and see if they do that stuff. And I bet you that almost all the best infielders will do it. I didn't learn much about fielding until I got much older. When I was younger, it was always just, yeah, you just field the ball and throw it. And the better players did it better. And if you weren't a great infielder, it was tough to do much better because you didn't get any instruction. There's not a lot of infield instruction, especially at younger levels. There's a little bit more now. When I was younger, there was very little. All right? And so I'm convinced that this stuff works. Um, I know it does because in order to play at the big leagues, you have to be super, super consistent. You have to field the ball. 99 almost almost 99% of the time right if you want to be a starting infielder in the big leagues maybe let's say 97% of the time all right and so you it's you can't make errors you make very few errors and so you have to make sure that you are consistent with your mechanics which will help you be consistent when fielding the ball so give us a try let me know if it works i'm positive that it will hopefully this uh, helps you out please in the comment section below i'm sure someone already did it Please don't say, just let us watch him field the ball. If you want to watch Javi Baez field the ball, you can go on to TV or you can go on YouTube and type in Javi Baez fielding. This was for mechanical breakdown. I'm going to try not to get upset. Thanks again for watching. We'll talk to you later. If you've enjoyed this video and want to learn more about building the elite swing, check out our new course. We have over two hours of content, almost 30 hitting drills, we break down the exact mechanics that you're going to want to implement into your swing. I've put the link in the description if you want to go check it out.